Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're going to be talking about a challenge slash experiment that we're going to be doing for the next four to five months. And we will find out who's going to be helping us with that experiment right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews. We do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So today we're talking about a challenge slash experiment. Um, it's, I guess it's more of a personal challenge than an overall challenge, right? I'm really excited about this. It's a reverse diet. Yeah. We're going to be doing a reverse diet slash cut at the end of it. We're actually doing this in the opposite, but we're going to get into that more later. Uh, but what kind of brought this about is that Rachel and I eat at what a lot of people would consider a calorie deficit to maintain. You know, if you went back to your standard American diet days or you look on a nutritional label, usually it says that the average American person is eating 2,000 calories a day. That's right. like supposed to be the goal, right? Well, right. we I don't eat 2,000 calories a day. I usually eat somewhere between, what, 1,450 and 1,550, somewhere right. in there. Right. And, and you barely eat a 2,000 calories. I, yeah, I eat right around 2,000 calories. So so we have been talking to Keto Savage, Robert Sykes, about reverse dieting because he really works a lot on that program, especially with all of his different clients. And he was like, yeah, you guys should be eating a lot more food. So we jumped onto a Facebook live stream with him to talk about what reverse dieting is and what his plans are for us. And uh, it was quite interesting. Yeah. So we're going to play that here and then we'll come back and kind of wrap up exactly what we're going to be doing for the next four to five months. Wow. Okay, so we have uh, Robert here, Keto Savage, and we've been messaging back and forth with him because Robert uh, really talks a lot about reverse dieting and, you know, like slowly reducing your calories to do cuts and stuff. So we're going to do, I don't even know how long, we haven't really discussed how long we're going to do it. Um, some type of a cut and then what gradually adding back on Robert yeah so depending on where you're starting at like like just as a hypothetical example I've had clients come to me and they're already taking in very little calories with their primary goal being to lose body fat if they're already taking in very little calories there's not much runway from which to taper additional calories so we have to basically start with the reverse diet ramp up their metabolism and their caloric intake and get that back up to a healthy intake and then like reset the body there and then we can transition back into a caloric deficit. But if you're already taking in a healthy amount of calories, then we can just transition right into the deficit to begin with. Well, if you're older like me, then it was like the strategy for losing weight was always just eat nothing. And yeah, like eat yeah, it's not nothing. Good. At one yeah. point, Rachel actually originally, um, she weighed like 200 and almost 60 pounds. She lost over 100 pounds by eating no more than um, she ate, what, two bowls of oatmeal a day and a half or a quarter of a cup of yogurt. And she did that for two years. So she lost over 100 pounds in like seven or eight months, but her caloric intake was 500 calories to 600 calories a day for over two years. And then after a while, I just started gaining weight because there was nowhere to go. You know, mm -hmm. my body was storing everything. So when you think in the short in the short term, you're thinking, okay, if I eat less food, I'm not going, you know, I'm going to lose some weight. But in the long term game, you're really screwing yourself up. And that was something I really experienced because I was eating almost nothing, but then I started gaining weight. Right. So when I got yeah. her, when I got her back on keto, she had been steadily gaining weight. She'd gone from 130 pounds back up to about 180 pounds, and now she was trying to lose it. So now she's been eating around 1,400 calories and pretty much maintaining. But since you and I have been talking about this, we tried. I think what she's been doing about 1,550 calories. Mm -hmm. And have you been maintaining or increasing? I have been maintaining, but honestly, like it's like right there. You know, like I I, I would like to probably go down a little bit. Go down a little bit. I mean, just shooting from the hip, what I would recommend doing is is at least bumping you up to about 1,800 calories minimum 
and then you up to about 2,500 calories minimum um, okay. just to kind of see how your body responds there. Like as, as myself, as an example, I'm going to be transitioning into a cut in November. My baseline is about 32 to 3,500 calories. I'm taking in 4,000 calories currently to reset my metabolism at a higher rate so that when I transition into a caloric deficit, my body is much more responsive to it. So like if y'all are maintaining at about, you know, 1,500, 2,100, that's like the equivalent of me maintaining at about 3,500. So right. I'm ramping mine up to 4,000, so y'all need to ramp y'all's up a little bit more, ramp up that metabolism. Your metabolism follows suit. Like if you take your calories down, your metabolism slows down. If you take your calories up, your metabolism speeds up. There is a point of diminishing returns, but I'm willing to bet y'all can, y'all can sustain that little bit higher intake than you're currently doing. And that's kind of set the stage for transitioning into a healthier cut later. Okay. So did this beautiful young man just tell me that I would have the possibility of eating 1,800 calories a day? Yeah. That is, that's like the best, this is the best Rachel day Rachel can out-eat most men. She could probably out-eat you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean. I, I cannot eat, I mean, I've tried doing OMAD and I, I cannot get 2,000 calories in in a single meal. She'll, she can eat three, 4,000 calories in a single meal, no problem. So this is absolutely yeah. against everything i mean you're used to the keto diet being against what people are you know think of as like standard and normal right right mm -hmm. so when you say hey i want my metabolism to to ramp up the thought of increasing your calories for a lot of people is extremely scary i mean that's just it's frightening yeah can you explain robert how exactly does why does this work over lowering like significant like three four hundred five hundred calories because if you get into pro you know like apps like chronometer and it says well how much weight do you want to lose and how fast do you want to lose I keep telling people stop choosing where do you want to lose you can lose two pounds a week and they're dropping four or five hundred calories off of their diet why is this the better way to try to lose and weight and maintain your weight so a lot of people make the mistake of they, they say they want to lose weight, so they just automatically hack 500 plus calories off of their nutrition. But when you do that, you may get some initial you know, short-term loss, some weight loss. A lot of going to be coming from just water, inflammation, just being in a surplus. But what happens is, you know, there's a couple of different ways to go about it. You can just cut a whole bunch of calories all at once, but that's a pretty shock. That's a pretty big shock to your body. And you don't know where in that 500 calorie window things actually started to re respond. Whereas if you make very small adjustments over an extended period of time, you know, like taper off, you know, 25, 50, maybe 75 calories every week or two, then you're going to be able to pinpoint at what point your body starts responding. So that's a much healthier, sustainable way to go about it. It's not just a crazy, drastic change all at once. And right. then when you go down, you know, like if you go down too low on calories, your body's just going to shut down. Like, you, like I said earlier, your metabolism slows down as your calories drop. So you have to kind of you know, manipulate things in a, in a strategic way so that you're able to keep metabolism at a healthy rate even as calories drop. If you go too far, you cross that threshold, your metabolism is going to shut down. And then it's basically convincing the body that, hey, food is, is a scarcity here. And then anything that you do consume, your body's going to pretty much automatically turn into fat because you've convinced that there's, there's not going to be any more food. So it starts automatically changing whatever you do consume to fat very rapidly and it becomes very hard to lose fat at that point and your composition starts to decrease. Right. I definitely think that that is where I was at, like totally. So, um, and for someone like me who has been on different crazy yo-yo diets for, for years and years, there's still hope for me. It's not just a case of doing, you know, reverse diet if you're in your 20s, but for someone in their 40s and who has screwed up their metabolism after years of, you know, doing this incorrectly there's still hope for me too oh yeah absolutely i mean honestly most of my clients that are doing this are you know 40 50 year old females that have done what you've done and they'll, they'll be way low in their calories for way too long and then they start ramping up calories gradually from all good sources and their body's finally getting the fuel that's been deprived of for years so it starts responding like it's supposed to i'd love to get into the 170s just to even see like how I would feel there and then start putting some muscle back on to build up weight again. But I definitely would like to get some of like, you know, having lost 110 pounds as it is on keto, you know, I still have like the, the fat rolls around my stomach, but they're like super loose. The fat it's almost impossible to get rid of because like you can literally pull it away from your stomach because <laughs> it's tucked in the skin rolls. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you kind of look at 
the progression of where you've come over the past several years. So if you've been kind of tapering your calories for an extended period of time, and you haven't really gone through a legitimate reverse diet, then I would recommend doing that before you try and lose more body fat. And if you lose weight while you're reverse dieting, that's a plus. But I mean, if you simply, like the goal of reverse dieting is to ramp up metabolism. It's not to lose body fat during that period of time. So like, right. you have to be okay with, if you do gain a little bit of body fat, that just kind of comes with the territory. You right. know, sometimes people lose body fat, but sometimes you gain a little bit of body fat. It comes with the territory. But when you do that, you kind of set the stage and you lay better foundation for losing body fat in a more sustainable fashion going forward. Okay. So like if you were to, you know, spend the next several months transitioning into reverse diet, ramping your calories back up, giving your body the time it takes to reset at that higher intake, then when you do transition into a cut, you're going to be able to be much more responsive to that decrease in calories, and it's going to be much more sustainable than trying to drop from what your current caloric intake is. Plus, you don't have to take your calories that low because you're going to have more runway, and you're going to be able to do it over a gradual period of time. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, I guess to lose the weight, I was eating like 15, 1,600 calories. So I've been eating this like between 2,000 and 2,300 calories for the last year and a half in like the maintenance mode. So. I mean, that's, that's pretty good too. I mean, that's that's not like a that, that's a good maintenance caloric intake. It's not too low by any means. It's not very high, um, right. but it's like a good healthy intake, you know. So if you're going to – what I'd probably do – I mean, what, what time frame did you say you, you've got the, you, the football? Sorry. We're putting this in your hands. This is an experiment run by Robert Sa Robert Sykes, and then like we're gonna kind of share experience, and I guess we'll check in with you. You can adjust our macros or whatever, when however often you want to do it. We'll kind of check in with all of our subscribers like each week, and then we'll check with you like every you know couple months or whatever, just to have you adjust things or let's see how we're going or whatever you want to do. But we're yeah. willing to do it as long of a time frame if you think it should be 90 days, 120 days, 60 days, whatever you think is going to be best. So like a good general rule of thumb, and again, this is going to be highly individualized, but a general rule of thumb is like you take the time that you've been in a, a cut, in a deficit, and then you at least double that for the time that you reverse that because you want to be – you want to give your body the the maintenance plus or you know a surplus in calories longer than the time that you're in a deficit because if you're chronically in a deficit you're you're going to be you know straining your metabolism pretty hard but if you're in a maintenance or a caloric surplus for an extended period of time longer than that of which you're in a, a deficit when you do transition to a deficit it's going to be enough of a shock a new stimulus to your body that's going to be really responsive and effective at losing that body fat during that window of time so if you've been at a maintenance for a year and a half now you know that that's a pretty good foundation that you've laid in order to transition to a cut. I would recommend still ramping up calories at least for a few months prior to just to kind of get the metabolism and the furnace cranked up even more. Okay, I recommend that too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, and because Rachel wants to drop like ten pounds too. Same, because I'm about 143 pounds, and um, I I I think I've got some room to lose. Still, I, I have started exercising and I have noticed some muscle going on in my legs. I bike a lot and I started those stinking resistance bands. Those are good, aren't they? Oh my god, they're kicking my butt. How, She's doing the toning program from Under Sun Fitness. How can yeah. something the the width of a rubber band like hurt so badly? I mean it's it's crazy. Yeah, I was I was pretty impressed. Like I don't use them as my daily training mechanism, but I, I use them when I'm traveling. And like as a as a deload week, but I mean you can get a pretty legitimate workout just for the resistance bands. I mean one of the guys that I have working here, that's all he trains with, and he's training for a bodybuilding competition using solely resistance bands and body weights. It's pretty impressive. I mean I cannot believe I am just like pouring sweat. I can't move my arms, and I'm I'm looking at this this thing on the counter, and I mean it's it's thinner than my iPhone case. It's like in, mm -hmm. it's insane, but yeah. it's working. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the main thing. It's working. It's effective. It's easy. I mean, it takes the excuses away because you don't have to have a gym. You just take the rubber band with you. I know. Right. I'm really sad. You've taken all <laughs> of the excuses away. Now I'm stuck working out. Okay, so <laughs> so we we're, we're going to start off with increasing our calories is what you want to do? Yeah, and how long have you been at 1,500 calories? Mm. Probably, I'd say since January. Since January? Okay, and do you feel... Like hungry or satiated? How would you feel at that? I I I feel just right. Like I feel good at at fifteen hundred calories. I mean, I can always okay. eat more, but <laughs> I mean, but I feel ideally, good. 
what you want to do during the reverse diet is, is you know, ideally increase your training intensity, increase okay. the the resistance and the volume that you're moving in the gym. That way you're going to be able to make use of that extra calorie intake. So any time that you can use to, to build muscle that increase in fuel, you know, take advantage of it for sure. So like if y'all were to spend the next probably about three months or so gradually titrating those calories up, you know, you don't want to just jump them up, you know, overnight. But if you gradually increase by 50, 75, 100 calories each week or two, and then to, until you get to that higher intake over the course of three or four months, and then just sit there for a little bit, let your body readjust and kind of re-equalize at that intake, then when you do transition into a cut, it's going to be much, much more responsive. And you're going to be able to get a lot more movement from a lot less manipulation. So this is going to be interesting. So we're going to increase calories going into the holidays to lower calories yeah. at the holidays. What a yes. coincidence because I always increase calories during the holidays. <laughs> yeah, I mean it works out pretty good timing ways. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start my deficit in November. So I'm going to miss out on all the Thanksgiving and Christmas foods. You know, I'm going to be able to cut, cut those calories there. But uh, yeah, it's just part of it. it comes with the territory. So what do you do to kind of reward yourself for adulting during these times when you have to, you know, take away yummy and delicious food and some of the fun stuff that other people are enjoying? Honestly, it's just all a mindset shift for me. Like when I'm on, I'm on. When I'm off, I'm off. You know, so like if I'm not in a prep, I'm not trying to cut calories and I'll enjoy those foods. Always ketogenic, but I'll enjoy, you know, those foods that I'm not tracking. I'm not tracking my macros that, that extensively. When I'm transitioning to a competition prep, it's like I flip that light switch on and then it's just down to business. So it's just a mindset shift more than anything for me. What is the lowest calories that you usually suggest a woman go? I don't like taking any of my clients less than 1,300 calories. And that's like the very low, lowest. And that's like at the end of a prep. And during that time, I'm introducing keto caloric refeeds once a week. So. They're at 1,300 calories, but it's for a very short, finite period of time, and they do have a higher calorie day when they are that low. Now, what is the point of a refeed? Basically, just jumpstart metabolism, keep things ramped up. Like, if you're getting really down low on the calories during that last month or so, having a day a week where you're taking in a surplus of calories, or not even necessarily a surplus, but just more so than the, that low daily caloric intake, that gives your, your metabolism a jumpstart. Plus, it just gives you your mind a break from constantly being you know, under, under consuming a lot of food, it gives your, your mental break needed to kind of push through. Okay. Yeah. You want to refeed? Yeah. <laughs> All you gotta be careful. You can't go off the rails with them. You know, they're dangerous. Well, the one thing, I mean, and we tried telling people like, you know, like our subscribers and stuff, I mean, in the two and a half years, almost it's a little over two and a half years that I've been doing keto now, I've never had like a keto cheat day. Cheat day. I tell people yeah. if, if, you need to have a day where like you don't want to worry about it. Stay on keto, but just eat more calories. Yeah. Don't don't yeah. go off the rails and eat cookies and ice cream and all that stuff. You know, go get yourself some like rubble creamery or some killer killer creamery and eat that ice cream. Stay keto, but just eat higher calories. Oh, totally, totally. I mean, it's been five years for me, and I haven't had carb meal in that entire duration, and I'm all the better for it. You know, like you don't have to have the carbs. If you're if you're feeling cravings for the carbs and you're not fully adapted, in which case you need to just get fully adapted. Which is really weird how the cravings do go away. As somebody who like lived off of bread and pasta, and then loved potatoes, and I can I found now it's almost like somebody who is a smoker and can't stand the smell of cigarettes anymore. Like yeah. I'm walking past the bakery and like the smell of bread almost gets me nauseous now. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I was just in a grocery store and it, that was happening. We were down in like a, in a bread aisle and I thought, Oh my goodness, what's that smell? But it, cause it's, yeah. it's been so long. It makes sense. I mean, if you're, when once, once you feel the way you feel when you are adapted, it's like, it's not worth it to lose that in order to have that short-term pleasure of whatever carbohydrate food you're eating. You know, like you don't want to sacrifice that bigger picture, bigger vision goal for that minuscule moment in time. Yeah. Well, and we've even noticed, you know, getting away from even inflammatory oils and all that kind of stuff. It's not worth it to me to have to deal with the inflammation, not just, you know, what I'm going to have to deal with on the scale, but how I'm going to feel is, is a big thing for me. Right. And especially mm -hmm. for somebody like me, because I've got several injuries throughout my body. I've got pins in my ankle, so I've got a 30-year-old injury where I have severe arthritis. Um, I had dislocated my elbow. I had um, tendonitis in my wrists. 
So, I mean, all of that has gone away on keto, which is one of the biggest reasons I stay keto. I mean, for 20, almost 30 years, I was living on arthritis medication and Vicodin for my ankle injury and got to the point where it was pretty much, I wasn't gonna be able to walk anymore. I needed an ankle replacement surgery, but they don't last very long. It's like a year recovery, so I didn't wanna do that. Did, had no idea on keto that like it actually heals all that inflammation. Yeah. So yeah. being on keto, I never, I haven't taken any of those painkillers or arthritis medications anymore. Yeah, I mean, for me, like I, I was squatting, I'm a bodybuilder, so I would squat, do heavy squats all the time. And as soon as I switched over, I didn't have near the inflammation. So I used to only be able to squat once a week, and then it took me a whole week for my knees to recover. Whereas mm -hmm. now it's like I could squat one day after one after the other, and I wouldn't have any pain. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so are you going to? I don't want. We don't want to hold you up too long. Are you going to send us like where you want us to start with our calories and and carbohydrates? Yeah. And so, stuff? so normally I have like a spreadsheet, and you can track basically like. You have the spreadsheet, and then you, you use like a, my fitness pal or whatever macro track, you know, chronometer, yeah, whatever you're using. Yeah, so then you can track in there, and then you can kind of see the trend line that you're following. And then basically for you, the, the goal that I would recommend is ramp up calories, you know, roughly to about 2,500 for you and about 1,800, maybe even 1,900, just kind of depending on how your body's responding. But do so over the course of, you know, three months or so. Mm -hmm. And then once you reach that peak, sit there at that peak for a little while so your body can reset at that higher caloric intake but you don't want to ramp it up overnight you know you want to do it gradually by the course of like you know 50 calories a week or so okay, okay. so it's going to be like super strict tracking for the next 90 days as we increase it up yeah my, my whole take on tracking is that you know if you're if you're where you want to be if you feel good about your current composition if you're happy with where things are then eat intuitively eat instinctively and then not worry so much about it. But if you have a specific goal in mind, for me, you know, treat it like a scientific experiment. Like you don't want to leave a whole lot of stuff up to chance. Like control the variables that you can, make very small manipulations, test each variable one at a time, and then just really optimize instead of, you know, minimize basically. Right. Yeah. Cause I think we both have goals in mind right now to kind of cut some of the body fat and then start putting the muscle, you know, back on. Especially at our age, cause, you know, you already are losing muscle as you get older and with the, considering the amount of weight that we've both lost, I'm sure we lost even some more muscle, even though we were like doing keto. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like having, having your a legitimate reverse that in which you're actually increasing the fuel you're intaking, you really gain perspective on what your body does when it's at, you know, more of a surplus. Like when you're giving body more, your more, body more fuel, especially if you're training hard, your body's going to use that extra fuel and take positively. Like if you right. take in a bunch of fuel and you don't give it any use to it, then then you put on extra body fat. But if you're, you know, demanding things from your body, it's going to put it in good places. Okay. Okay. So we'll do that now. If people are interested in being trained by you and stuff, what uh, where could they find that information out? Uh, I'm on Keto Savage, KetoSavage.com, Keto Savage on Instagram. That's where I'm at. You type that and you'll find me. And anything new coming on with Keto Brick or the Keto Savage line? I know we you got a new flavor have, coming out that you won't tell anybody what it is, but we do have a new flavor. It's it's gonna be this is gonna be the best flavor. Like people are gonna love this flavor the most for sure. There is no way it's gonna be coconut cream. That stuff is so stinking awesome. I love coconut cream, but I'm I feel like this might just beat it. I don't know. I still it's like pretty the good. cookies and cream. The cookies and cream, I just, I don't know. I like the coconut cream, but I really like that cookies and cream. If you could mix the texture of the coconut cream with the cookies and cream, it would be like out of this world. Yeah, what is your favorite flavor besides this new one that's coming out? I can't, you know, people ask me that, but they're like my, my children. I can't like pick and choose. <laughs> it's like I love them all for, for who they are, you know? <laughs> right. That's awesome. I mean, and we've been getting keto bricks since like we used to have to sit there and hit refresh, refresh, refresh. We're like, it was like good they luck. Oh geez, yeah, yeah. We're we're finally to a point now with like our crew, our employees, our equipment, where we can like keep up with demand. But now that we're able to do that, we're gonna start increasing our our marketing efforts and just reaching out to more people. So hopefully, ramp up demand. Um, but yeah, it'll be good. The business is growing for sure. And still, we're excited no, uh, about it. No winner of the golden ticket. Actually, y'all be the first to know this. Oh, okay. Today, today, what? somebody sent me a picture of the golden brick that they have with the correct number code on there so we today oh, we had the goodness. first winner so you have the first the winner today but there's two winners out there right How there's, there's two bricks out there so one one has been found today there's still another one floating out there somewhere i had a bunch of uh the um the maple bacon left 
Mm -hmm. And so I finally went through and I was like, oh, I'm going to cut them all open just to look. <laughs> and then I found, then you put a thing on one of your videos that like, yeah, it wasn't even in the bacon ones. <laughs> and you tore through them for yeah. a reason. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't intentional. I, I don't know for sure what flavor it's in. I'm just trying to think back and remember, and I'm pretty sure we had already sold all the maple bacon before. I don't, I don't remember. I'm just you had mentioned it trying... like the week before the bacon one came out or the week that the bacon one was releasing. That that week before is when you had mentioned it. So I'm like, oh, it's got to be in the bacon one. So. <laughs> oh, well, shoot. I don't know, but there's definitely one still floating around out there somewhere. Now, is it ticket inside of the silver or is it – wrapped around the outside no it's the, the whole like there is no silver fill uh there is no silver wrapping it's all gold wrapping okay oh, so nice. yeah i'm just checking maybe i have to go unwrap them as well <laughs> <laughs> no you would you would know for sure there's a number like a random number that we put on top of the the foil and oh, it's okay. gold foil so it, it's it's it'd be hard to miss for sure yeah well, yeah I, we were hoping i'd i'd love to come out to the keto savage compound one of these days we'll have to try to get over there where are y'all located again south florida Right South outside Florida. of Fort Lauderdale. We're, yeah, we're in the Fort Lauderdale area. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So. Yeah, shoot, that wouldn't be too much trouble. That'd be just a plane ride. That's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate your hopping on with us, and if you know, if you want to send us exactly like how you want us to increase it, and we'll start following that spreadsheet, and we'll check in with you every once in a while, and we'll go from Sounds there. Good. Somebody's saying, is it yeah. mango key lime flavor? Yeah. Is mango, mango key lime? <laughs> that would be a good flavor. Yeah. Why not? That would be. I haven't tried any fruity flavors yet. That'd be tricky to make a shelf stable fruity flavor without using a bunch of, you know, crap ingredients like filler flavor ingredients. But I'll, I'll see what I can do. Start That's formulating. That's one of the things that we do like about the keto brick is that, I mean, no matter what, you have not compromised anything as far as keeping the good, strong ingredients and, you know, not putting a yeah. bunch of things like melted extra and all that stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely pledge saying... to not put a bunch of crap fillers and then like it's gonna be I, I spend a lot of money on ingredients I get the highest quality ingredients I can find yeah and that's what people are just starting to say thanks for all you do you you really put that. out just a great high quality product and we we do appreciate it so much and we rely on it so thank yeah. you <laughs> well, well thank you I mean it means more to me honestly than y'all could can possibly know like I truly truly do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart so Okay, well, appreciate it very much, Robert. And again, so if anybody is interested in, you know, what kind of training do you do? Do you do all the training just like over the phone or internet through email? So I use a software called Slack. I don't know if you're all familiar, but it's a messaging software. It just lets me keep things better, more organized. Um, but I'll jump on a call with them, then I'll, you know, correspond through Slack um, as a primary messaging software. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, I've been coaching now for I don't even know how many years, but I love it. Awesome. awesome. So. Well, we will uh, keep in touch with you so that we can get this going. So we'll start off with the reverse diet go up, and then I guess we'll be coming down right around the end of the holidays then, right? Awesome. Yep, yep. Show enough. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Robert. Thank you Appreciate so you much. Appreciate y'all. Bye. Take care. Thank you. So I think this experiment is happening at the exact perfect time of year. I don't know why you think that. Well, because we're going to be slowly increasing our calories going into the holiday season. First of all, that was like a shock to me because... You know, when I've been talking to, you know, Robert over the last few weeks, I kept telling him that I want to lose weight. You want to lose weight. And he said, well, we have to establish a baseline. So we upped our calories a little bit to establish a baseline and it hasn't been a good result. So I was shocked when he said, we're going to continue to increase for the next few months. But I don't know why you're thinking like this is a good time because by my calculations, this is the worst time. Wait, Why? It's the end of August. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start increasing our calories, he said, for like 60 to 90 days, right? Right. So September, October, November. Yeah. That's 90 days. You're going to increase calories. Then you're going to decrease calories. When will you be decreasing calories? Christmas. Right around Thanksgiving and Christmas. The only thing is we will be at the highest point calorie-wise that we've probably ever been in our entire yeah, life. Yeah, because he did say we're only going to, once we're at that high point, we're going to only take off like 25 to 50 a week anyway. So if all goes well, we'll probably be eating like seven or 800 calories more than we currently are at Christmas time. And then, so it won't be so bad. No. How cool will it be to go through the holidays and actually lose weight? <laughs> 
I can't wait. Eating more than you're used to eating. Oh my goodness. This this is a Christmas miracle. So we are really excited about this. Um, and what really inspired this for is number one, because we are always frustrated with like, we feel like we should be able to have more calories, especially as you're getting older and your metabolism slows down. And the whole purpose of this is to ramp up your metabolism. But we've just seen so many people like on our Facebook or in other groups and stuff where they're like only eating 1,100, 1,200 calories a day. And you heard what Robert said. He doesn't let any woman go below 1,300. And that's only like when they're on an extreme cut for a prep day. God bless him. So, so we are going to kind of do this challenge. And what we'll do is we're going to check in like once a week, once every couple weeks with what our current calories are and how we're feeling on it. And we're going to just kind of go through this over the next 90 to 120 days. Yeah, so I'm excited. And then we're gonna check in with Robert every, I don't know, few weeks as well to, to get his take on how we're doing. If we're eating the right things, if we have the right like fat ratios. I hope so. So We'll find out. Well, guys, that is our video for today. Let us know if you've ever done any kind of a cut or how about this, what are your current calories? You don't have to tell us, but give us an idea. What are your current calories and would you like to see them increased more and still be able to lose weight? Oh, yeah. So if you like what you saw today, do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.